Europa, Jupiter's moon, has more water than all of Earth's oceans combined. This makes it one of the most promising places to find aliens. Despite this, no human has ever set foot in this place, and everything indicates that it will be many years before that happens. But why can't we go for it? What prevents us from doing so? Today we will tell you why. Even though we know there is water on Europa and there could even be aquatic extraterrestrials, we cannot get there, no matter what we do. Let's get started. Just a moment, guys. Only 13% of subscribers know when we publish new videos. Make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell, because without it, you'll miss formats and documentaries you won't find anywhere else. Europa, an extraordinary moon. Europa is not just any moon. It's one of four Galilean moons discovered by Galileo Galilei in January 1610, when with a rudimentary telescope, he first observed four small dots moving around Jupiter night after night. Thus were born the names of Io, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa, the protagonist of this story. For centuries, it was just a bright spot in the sky, one object among many, until in the 20th century, space exploration allowed it to be seen for the first time up close. The Pioneer 10 probe was the first to reach the Jovian system. Launched by NASA on March 2, 1972, it was tasked with studying Jupiter's radiation belts and obtaining the first close-up images of the largest planet in the solar system. The Pioneer probes weigh just 570 pounds, and thanks to their lightness, reach speeds in excess of 32,000 miles per hour. The mission took approximately 21 months to reach Jupiter, making its historic flyby in December of 1973. A year later, Pioneer 11 followed, definitively opening the door to future missions. Although Pioneer wasn't designed to study Europa in detail, it captured images that completely changed perceptions of this moon. The photographs, although blurry, showed an extremely bright world with unusually high reflectivity. From Earth, Europa looked like a simple icy sphere with nothing special about it. But the images revealed that its smooth, white surface was composed almost entirely of water ice. Most surprising was the absence of craters. In most bodies without an atmosphere, any impact is marked for billions of years. On Europa, on the other hand, almost no collision tracks were observed. It suggests that its surface was constantly renewed, as if something from inside was pushing out again and again, erasing the marks of the past or covering them with new ice. Thus arose the first bold hypothesis. Europa would not be a simple ball of inert ice, but an active world with a dynamic geology and perhaps an underground ocean of liquid water under its thick icy crust. But these hypotheses could not be answered with pioneer images alone. More information was needed, and that's why NASA bet on a new generation of missions that would forever change our vision of the solar system, the legendary Voyager probes. The largest water reserve known until then. The suspicion that Europa could hide an underground ocean became a real fascination when the first images from the Voyager probes arrived. Launched in 1977, both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 weighed 1,800 pounds. Both went through the Jovian system in 1979, just over a year after their launch. Although its primary mission was to study Jupiter and Saturn, the onboard cameras captured images that forever changed what we thought we knew about the solar system's moons. Europa was no longer a simple block of rock and ice floating in space. The photographs revealed a complex, cracked terrain covered by a crust of ice crossed by long, dark lines. Those fractures were reminiscent of the icebergs that form on Earth's frozen oceans, and most shockingly, no significant impact craters were still visible. In a body without an atmosphere, where impacts would have to be preserved for millions of years, that absence could only mean one thing. Europa's surface was constantly renewed. For the first time, scientists began to take seriously the idea that this moon had geological activity. Something under its bark pushed upwards, erasing traces of impact and molding an ever-new terrain. That something could only be an internal sheet capable of maintaining liquid water beneath the ice. But direct evidence was still lacking. The real twist came with the Galileo mission. The Galileo probe, launched in 1989 and arriving at Jupiter in 1995, was the first to orbit the giant planet and study its moons in depth. 
During several low-altitude flybys over Europa, it obtained high-resolution images that confirmed displaced ice sheets, recent features, and darker areas, likely caused by compounds emerging from the interior. But the most revolutionary was the detection of magnetic field variations near Europa, something that could only be explained by a salty ocean beneath its surface. The suspicion was already bordering on certainty, and then came the ultimate test. In 2013, the Hubble Space Telescope detected geysers of water vapor emerging from Europa's South Pole, rising more than 100 miles into the atmosphere. For the first time, water escaped into space from inside a distant moon. Europa definitely had water. But it still wasn't enough. A more advanced probe capable of peering under its massive ice sheet was needed. Thus began the story of Juno. A Global Ocean when the Juno probe was launched on August 5, 2011, its target was not Europa, but Jupiter itself. Its primary mission was to study the planet's magnetic field, deep atmosphere, and internal structure. No one imagined then that Juno would also reveal new clues about one of Europa's greatest mysteries. After a journey of almost five years and a distance traveled of more than 1.7 billion miles, Juno arrived at Jupiter on July 4, 2016 achieving a flawless orbital insertion. It has since orbited the planet on elliptical trajectories designed to minimize its exposure to intense Jovian radiation while collecting unique data. Unlike the Voyagers or the Pioneers, Juno took much longer to reach Jupiter. The main reason was its enormous weight. The Juno probe weighed 7,100 pounds, well above the Voyager probes which weighed 1,800 pounds, and even more than the Pioneer probes which weighed just 570 pounds. The more complex a space mission is, the heavier it becomes. The heavier it gets, the more fuel it requires and the slower it travels, so travel time increases considerably. But that extra weight wasn't due to fuel. It was also due to its massive load of scientific instruments. One of the most important is the GRAM, Jovian Infrared Auroral Mapper, which enabled the observation of details of Europa's surface in the infrared spectrum with a precision never before achieved. As a result, thermal variations were detected in some regions of its icy crust, suggesting recent geological activity and even the possible presence of pockets of water closer to the surface. Perhaps the most intriguing finding came from the study of the magnetic field. Juno refined Galileo's measurements and showed that the magnetic interactions between Europa and Jupiter are much more complex than previously believed. These interactions can only be explained if, beneath the ice, there exists not just small separate bodies of water, but an entire ocean of salt water capable of conducting electricity and responding to the planet's gigantic magnetic field. Juno also enabled analysis of how Jupiter's intense radiation belt particles directly affect Europa. This is crucial, as any future mission that attempts to land or drill into its ice will have to withstand radiation levels thousands of times higher than those on Earth. At 7,100 pounds, Juno proved that even missions not designed to study moons can completely change our understanding of a distant world. And even so, the big question remains. If we know there is an ocean down there, what prevents us from going to see it? The Unreachable Ocean So far, all the probes that have reached the Jovian system have been unmanned, lightweight, autonomous, and designed to survive in extreme conditions. But a ship capable of transporting human beings would have logistical, structural, and energy requirements dozens of times more demanding. To understand why this is still so difficult, just compare the weights of the probes that have already reached Jupiter. Pioneer 10, about 570 pounds. Voyager 1 and 2, 1,800 pounds each. Galileo, about 5,000 pounds. Juno, heaviest yet at 7,100 pounds. Even Juno, loaded with state-of-the-art scientific instruments, weighs just a little more than a pickup truck. Now imagine a human crewed spacecraft with pressurized cabins, radiation shielding, life support systems, storage of food, water, oxygen, fuel, and living space for several astronauts for years. The most conservative estimates indicate that such a craft could weigh between 200,000 and 400,000 pounds not even counting a descent module or an exploration habitat on Europa. This is more than twice the weight of an Apollo spacecraft, complete with its command module, lunar module, and propulsion stage. But mass is not the only problem. 
travel time is another monumental challenge. With today's technology, even a relatively light probe like Juno took almost five years to reach Jupiter. Galileo, using gravitational assists, took more than six years. A human crewed mission cannot remain in the solar system for so long without exposing its crew to extreme physical and psychological risks. Added to this is Jupiter's lethal environment. Its magnetic field, the most powerful in the solar system, generates a deadly radiation belt that poses a serious threat to humans without adequate protection. Any human crewed ship would need special armor, further increasing its weight. In addition, it would be essential to avoid orbits close to the planet and to plan each approach to Europa with extreme precision. And finally, there's fuel. It's not enough to just get there. It takes energy to break, orbit, and then accelerate again to return to Earth. The colossal amount of fuel would require refueling en route, perhaps from the Moon, Mars, or even a base on Ceres. Even so, all is not lost. There's a concept that could change everything one day. The Space Highway Today, the idea of a human crewed mission to Europa sounds wild, but it won't always be like this. The key to turning that impossible journey into reality could lie in a futuristic concept already taking shape in the plans of space agencies and private companies, the so-called Space Highway. A network of bases distributed throughout the solar system, designed to function as resupply, repair and logistical support stations for long-range missions. Currently, each mission must take off from Earth, carrying absolutely everything necessary to reach its destination and back. Fuel, life support systems, spare parts, food, energy. That's one of the reasons why our missions are so costly, limited, and slow. But a space highway would completely change this logic. Instead of carrying everything from the start, ships could be resupplied along the way. This infrastructure would include stations in Earth orbit, on the Moon, on Mars, perhaps on Ceres, the dwarf planet in the asteroid belt. Each would function as a kind of gas station and space workshop, where ships could stop, swap crew, repair systems, and continue their journey. With this, rockets would no longer need to carry all the useful mass from the start, allowing for lighter, more efficient, and faster designs. With intermediate stations, a human crewed mission to Jupiter could reduce its one-way duration from six to eight years to just two to three years, depending on the propulsion system and the route efficiency. It's still a brutally long journey, but no longer impossible. Added to this would be technologies such as advanced ion propulsion, plasma engines, or even future fusion engines, which could further shorten times and make human transport much safer. Of course, we are still a long way from building such a road. The challenges are enormous cost, maintenance, millions of miles from Earth, international cooperation, technological innovation, and decades of testing. Although there are no permanent bases on the Moon or Mars today, projects such as Artemis are already taking the first steps. And perhaps one day humanity will set foot on Europa and discover what lies beneath its ice. Water? Life? What do you think is under that ice? Let us know in the comments. And if you'd like to know more about space travel, check out our format with other moons and planets.